Hey guys, I just wanted to give a full game plan and breakdown of the strong close. Um, giving y'all the plays pretty much. I'm going to go ahead and give y'all a couple of adjustments um, for situations. Now this isn't necessarily going to be a full game um, formation, but it is something that is still viable and um, we're going to kind of get more into it. These will be the audibles that you will have in uh, your strong close. You will have the halfback zone week, the PAD cross, the wide receiver out, and the wide trail. I'm going to get into the breakdown for you fellas so that you guys know how to execute and perfect this offense. Hey guys, um, kind of get into more what you're trying to impose when you're doing this. Um, the main thing here is you want to be able to run the ball. You don't want to be too pass oriented. You know, so that you don't just have your opponents pinning their ears back and pass committing and playing containment and try to get you out of rhythm of what you're doing. Um, so a couple of the runs that you're going to do, they're pretty basic. I'm just going to kind of give to them the, the dive, the off tackle, and the quick toss. Um, those are all power runs um, with zone initiative. Uh, pretty much is what you're going to do is, is I try to preach. I'm just going to go random play. Um, if you do impact blocking, do it on your receivers or your fullback. Don't, or your, maybe your tight end. Don't do it on linemen because if you do it on the linemen, it's going to be a dead giveaway in this situation. So just tap up twice on the right stick. Um, usually dive formation, dive plays don't flip unless it's single back. Um, but formations like this where you got a fullback, you know, a lead blocker, it's not going to flip. You know, as opposed to like if you run like a zone run, like zone week or something, it'll flip. So just be mindful of that. Um, you don't have to impact block everyone. As long as there's an impact block assignment on the field, everyone's going to kind of be more aggressive in their run blocking. So that's just the first thing that I just want to go ahead and just point out. Now the next thing when you got your uh, your impact block on the field, you should be fine versus whatever is on the field, you know, if you can get three to four or five yards of carry, you're usually okay, so we're just going to kind of run it here. You don't want to necessarily hold turbo, you want to kind of find your run run lane first, because the minute you hold turbo, they're going to um, kind of shoot those gaps, so you just kind of hold off on the turbo and then just steer your way first. You got to have to train yourself to do that, you know, and I know it doesn't just happen overnight, but just make sure that you don't touch the turbo until you find that nice little lane that you can kind of push up for. So you should easily get, you know, if you're running the dive, three three to five yards of carry, you know, as long as they're not cramping up just using this technique. So like I said, just make sure that you're impact blocking and then just steer if you're running back. Don't hold turbo in traffic, okay? That usually warrants turnovers um, against big hitters, et cetera, et cetera. So I just want to make sure that I emphasize that. Nothing too technical. That's pretty much all you're going to be doing. It's just going to be one of your your off play runs that you're going to be using. I'm going to get into the next one. All right. So same thing. the The off tackle is just like a zone run, except it goes between the tackle and the tight end. Um, it is important that you have the tackle in the side end, that's your gap that you're supposed to shoot for. It's not like a dive that goes through the A gap, and it's not like a zone that goes through the B gap. This is your C gap run. Okay, so if you know that no one's really paying attention to that C gap, you know, and you feel like you got a good enough tight end that can set the edge, and you know, that fullback can kind of push in there and take that linebacker out, and then you can get a one-on-one -on -one with either, you know, either other linebacker or safety. Um, like I said, it's just nothing technical. Just make sure that you impact block and don't hit turbo. Just kind of pay attention. This is your C-gap run. Remember, between the tackle and the tight end is what you're looking for. You should just be able to, just like the other run, you should just be able to kind of get three to five yards of carry pretty easy. I'll just kind of show you again with up, up, up against random coverages. Um, only thing that I would do is just make sure that you have your ID on the second level on these runs. And you could just... Find your little cut lane, 
as long as you're not holding turbo, you should be able to cut it upfield just like a, a like B gap. Sometimes the uh, the guard and tackle and tight end, they'll just slide the defensive end and linebackers out of the way, and you can just run right up through the A gap sometimes. So it's just like that. Don't nothing too technical again. Um, main thing is just don't turbo when you're doing this run. Just kind of find you find where you fit, get in where you fit in. Okay. Um, you know, it's practice mode, so eventually they're going to start picking on me and uh, shooting gaps up right there. But I'm still going for it. So as long as you kind of understand, you kind of mix mix it in with the dive. You can kind of keep people off guard, you know, which gap to shoot. You know, you just kind of pay attention to which gaps your opponents are shooting. And then you can kind of determine which um, of those two inside runs you want to use. The last one is more or less if they start pinching their uh, line. If you see them pitching, if they tend to pinch their line a lot, you can come out and um, uh, let me put my other stick on for this because that's the only time your toss runs are going to work. Okay, is you, you play someone that you constantly worried about the inside run, and you know they want to come out and trying to stop the inside by pinching their line. Give me one sec. It's like the only time that I use two controllers for this. Uh, let's go to replay. So if you, like I said, if you're playing someone that likes to come out and pinch their line in or whatever, we'll just pick, let me pick the play. And then again, you know, it's an outside run like this. The further outside you're running, this is a D gap run. Um, further outside you run with the ball, faster you're running back against them, obviously. I'm just, okay. Same thing here. Make sure you have your impact lock on the field. I don't know if he's on. He's not even calling. Right, two player. They're not. They're not going to go through the cadence of calling it in two player. But you know, as long as you know you have that. Now, like I said, as long as they're like pinching in and they want to stop their inside runs, you know, you're going to have a little bit more leverage on the outside. Now, granted, they do have Von Miller and he has the uh, <laughs> that note that run stuff. So a lot of the, a lot of the times when you run these, I would suggest running them flipped because most of the run stopper, the edge run stuffers are usually on the right side so just kind of pay attention to where they're at like I said make sure you have an impact block on the field it's not going to show it because I have two sticks and like I said just if they're pinched in you know this is when you run this run same thing don't hold turbo just get in where you fit in you could easily get big yards especially if they like trying to shoot gaps you know if you deal with someone that likes to shoot gaps you could definitely get in um, other than that, I shouldn't have ran it that way, but it's fine. You know, as long as you understand that part of the concept, it's not one of the flashiest runs. You know, you'll probably get more of this in the red zone or short yardage situation as opposed to, you know, being more of a base run, you know, all the time to use. Um, but other than that, it's something that you can use to kind of throw in a nice little wrinkle in, get some easy yards, okay? Alright, so I went over, you know, the runs that you're going to be able to use to kind of keep your opponent honest. You don't want them, like I said, sitting there pinning their ears back with pass commit and contain every single down. Um, there's going to be a few adjustments that I'm going to make um, that should help. And we'll start with the, um, we'll, with the, uh, the PAD cross optional adjustments that you'll make um, usually you when you come out people will come out in like nickel 335 wide and they will they will try to press you okay I see this a lot like they'll come over there they'll crash their line you know and they they will really try to get after your run game right or your short quick passes um, now if they're playing man I'm gonna utilize motion hikes in my scheme bear with me here 
Um, I mean, it's not really going to work too much. All right. So if they're playing, man, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to opt to take the play action out. So they'll, they'll, they'll probably put, like, contain on the field, right? I'm going to show you. they got contain on the field. All right. So the main thing is you don't you don't want to run play action versus contain. And I think since the update, a lot of people are running the contain and the play actions aren't as effective as they once were. So just be mindful of that. The next thing is because contains are out so wide, I'm probably not going to be um, using the fullback option route versus this formation. I would probably just opt to do an out route with a tight end. You know, it's just something like, something simple. I still got six guys blocking, and if it's a blitz, like I said, you got to check down to the running back, you know, that you can um, definitely go ahead and take off. They feel like it, it becomes a problem. You can just keep dinking and dunking. Um, if it's behind the line of scrimmage, it'll count as a rush. Uh, and it's just something else that your opponents have to um, kind of be scripted for. You know, like they can't sit there and pin their ears back and press you the whole game. Okay, so they just keep coming out there, playing contain, and trying to shoot gaps on you or whatever. So they're not going to be able to do that against this play. Like I said, just put your running back in a swing route, and instead of using the option route with the fullback, just go a little quicker quicker with the uh, tight end on the out route that we still have the concept. And like I said, pressure gets in. You don't feel like you can make the pass over there to your tight end or whatever. You know, just check it down to your running back. You know, you always want to take your quick read versus the blitz, okay? So, just one more time, just to kind of show you. I want to get, a, get through this as quick as possible. Okay, like I said, just put it over there. Play art should look like that. And like I said, blitz comes through. Just hit the check down. And just be mindful, because sometimes they're in man. See, the AI will tend to kind of start reacting to... Uh, to dumb dumb downs so just be mindful of that but other than that it's pretty much all you're gonna have to do is just check down to uh check down everything and say they play press and then just kind of take 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 what your money gives you you know and it's like it's, it'll be an easy completion um other than that that's just what i'm gonna do if they're blitzing um now if i feel like they're using deep routes a lot. This is going to be the next thing that I'm going to do. So I feel like they're in a zone and they're just going to try to take away the crossing route and they just want to stick on the crossing route. Like I said, just play a defense that I know that people are going to come out. Let's say they're running a buzz. And we're back out in this. Um, one thing that I will opt to do, if I know they're not blitzing, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that deep route and put him in a hitch, okay? And then the next thing that I'm going to do is I still want that crossing route to kind of be effective. So just keep the option route, let that tight end block wide for us. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to motion him over here, okay? Now what's going to happen is he's going to have to choose, like if he's playing any type of match coverage, either one of two things is going to happen, okay? Edwards is now the outside receiver, so he's going to command respect off of the outside or any zones there near that area. So with him there, he's going to be your quick read option. Um, usually if they're playing match coverage, sometimes it'll be a two receiver, two defensive player plant. Okay, Two guys are going to stick to him and that flat route is going to be wide open. So it's just something to be mindful of. Just kind of do the play action, see how the defense reacts. If not, you just take the easy hitch. Okay. So it's just something to kind of throw into your offense, you know, easy completions. You don't want to necessarily just always go with the money route, okay? So sometimes the short route is going to be, you know, your game breaker. Going to make or break the game, just kind of do, do easy things. You can opt to put the tight end on the out route and then just block the fullback. And then just kind of watch, see how he pulls them out. Easy, easy versus any kind of coverage. Easy read. Just make sure that um, you kind of pay attention. Don't be tunnel vision. Kind of do make your reads. You know, you still got two other routes on the field, three other routes on the field that you uh, can opt to throw it to. But just kind of just take your easy read first and then kind of progress deep from there. Okay, guys? 
Um, other than that, let's uh, kind of get into the next play that I went over. And you can kind of scheme around some of these things. You know, it's just, a, like I said, it's just an update. Um, if you have a problem with people trying to use her routes or whatever, we can kind of do the same thing here. Um, let's say they're running, you know, traditional cover two, right? We have our cover two beater on the field. And I know initially, you know, we did the motion with the tight end and, you know, the, the slant over the top. Now, sometimes, you know, they might have a safety or something underneath that might be fast enough to kind of use or both of those routes, you know. So you're not going to necessarily have that as an option. So another kind of thing you want to do is you want to space them, right? So one thing, like I said, you kind of keep that hitch route alive. And then what I'm going to do here is I'm going to opt to block the running, block the pullback, and then same thing, just kind of do a little swing route over there to the other side. So I have me a nice little two read underneath, especially if they're trying to use her, you know, over the top on the, the big the big plate. So it's just a simple thing, make your read, take what you got, okay? Just have something underneath that they're going to have to respect. It's going to make your opponents play a lot different on defense, and if not, you're going to be able to just dink and dunk all the way down the field. And it's just going to be a problem, okay? Um, other than that, like I said, just go ahead and block him. And then we, we still have, you know, the read over the top if they're, if they're not dialing in on it. So you still have that over-under concept that I really, really love, as well as being able to kind of pick the user apart and make them make a lot of decisions, especially if they like to user um, the linebackers or anything inside of the box. It's a lot easier to pick on them than it is to kind of pick on people that try to stay over the top with their safeties and cornerbacks all game. Um, other than that, it's probably pretty much the only other other way I would run this particular play. Um, you can you can be experimental with it, but like flat routes and um, you know option routes and stuff. Like one good way to probably do that, like you can motion him out. Hold up, gonna get into it. Kind of motion him out right move him out hot route him so his route goes deeper okay and when you motion him back in his, his route looks a lot better right so he's got a little bit deeper on his route and then you can take this guy instead of running a hitch you can run a flat route okay and you can just motion the flat over and just block him right now we got a three three flood concept with an over-the-top beater, and we can just attack them underneath, okay? So there's just a lot of stuff that you can do. Um, if there's anything that you guys, you know, that have already bought the ebook or whatever, if there's anything that's giving you problems, then just let me know, and um, I can kind of sit down in the lab with you and kind of show you other adjustments that I've been working on. So again, I'm going to show you this last adjustment for the Y trail that we're going to use is before you motion him out, put him on an out route. That's going to give him an out step, okay? If you motion him out first and give him an out route and then motion him back in, he's going to run right into the line. So make sure you do it from the backfield first. Motion him over and then smart route him. Motion him back in. Go ahead, block. You can block the pullback in the progress to kind of help you save some time. And then the last thing you do, like I said, you can take that flat route, and he's just going to be pulling zones over. You can motion hike it or let him let them sit really your choice easy read and now there's something they're gonna have to respect okay we'll get into the next one